So we've now seen how to filter the data you get back in an API response with Django. But often there are other requirements. For example, you want to be able to search for data that contains a particular string, or you want to be able to order the data that's coming back in a particular way. And you can do that using URL parameters as well. And in this video, we're going to dive in and we're going to see how Django REST framework facilitates these. In the last video, we looked at the Django filter backend. But in this video, we're going to look at a couple of extra ones, the search filter and the ordering filter. Now this search filter class supports simple query parameter based searching and it's based on the Django admin search functionality. And when you use this, the browsable API in Django REST framework will include this search filter control that you see here. Now in order to actually apply the search filter, what we need to do is add this search fields attribute to the generic view class or to the Django REST framework view set. And we're going to come on to view sets very soon in this series. And these search fields, they should be set to a list in Python containing the different fields that you want to be able to make searchable on that given model. So the model or query set in this case relates to users and the search fields are the username and the email address. Now what I'm going to do is go back to VS Code and we have this product list create API view here and that's what we worked with in the last video where we added the filter set class and set it to that Django filter class called product filter that we defined. What we can do now is add the search underscore fields attribute to this generic view and we can set that to a Python list or a tuple containing the different fields we want to make searchable. Now the model or query set relates to products so let's open models.py and if we look at the product what fields might we want to make searchable? Well, we might want to make the name and let's say the description searchable here. So let's go back to our view class and I'm going to add these two fields as search fields. Once we've added that, I'm going to start the Django server at the bottom and I'm going to navigate back to the REST framework browsable API. So we're now on the browsable API and this is a get request that we're sending to slash products and you can see we get back all of the products as part of the JSON. Now the filter we added in the previous video allows us to do things like look for names that contain a string. So if I pass in lev here, we're going to get back a subset of the data and that's only going to be items where the string for the name contains that phrase lev. Now when we add the search fields, if we go back to the documentation, the client can then filter items in the list by making queries such as this one here. Now what it adds in the URL is a parameter called search and by default that's going to perform a case insensitive partial match. So it's quite similar to what we already had with the I contains statement, but this is one that's built in to Django REST framework. You don't need to install Django filter in order to use this. So let's test it out and go back to this page here. I'm going to remove the filter that we have at the moment and just get back all of the products. Now let's go to the URL and we're going to add that search parameter here and we're going to set it to vision. So basically we're looking for any product where the name or the description contains that text of vision. So let's search for this and we're going to see that this actually doesn't work. I've forgotten to do something important. So let's go back to views.py and what we also need to do here is we need to specify that we're using a different filter backend. So we have the filter set class, but if we go back to the REST framework documentation, you can see here that when we use the search filter, we need to add it as a filter backend. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to add that particular field here. So it's called filter backends and we're going to set that to a Python list and we're going to reference the two filters that we're using. So the search filter that we have based on these fields here and also the Django filter backend that's going to use this filter set class. Now we need to import these. So let's go to the top here and I'm going to import right at the bottom here. So let's paste these in. From REST framework, we're going to import the filters module and from Django filters REST framework module, we're importing the Django filter backend class. And I'm going to copy the name of that and let's go back to filter backends here and paste that in. And as well as that, from the filters module, we're going to use the search filter as the second filter backend. So let's save that. And now we have filter backends as well as search fields being added to this generic view. We can go back to the browser in this case, and I'm going to go back to the API. And if I refresh this page, hopefully we are now going to filter to products where the name or description contains the word vision. So let's refresh this page. And you can see now all of the products have the name of television. And if I switch this out to the word amazing here, we're going to see that it also filters by the description. So let's search for that and you can see we get back the same response here. This time it's the description field that matches what we have in the search parameter. So this is case insensitive. So if I add a capital Z here, it's still going to work as you can see here. So basically the REST framework search filter is a case insensitive partial matching filter. And it allows you to very easily search across a range of fields on a particular view that's tied to a model in Django. 
Let's then move on and we're also going to look at another filter here and it's the ordering filter that you can see on the left hand side. Before we do that, I want to also note that you can perform these searches on foreign keys and many to many fields and you use the standard Django notation for that. That's two underscores between the model and the field that you want to reference on that related model. And this will also work for JSON and HStore fields if you're using those. Now let's scroll down to the ordering filter and we're going to look at this one. This will support simple query parameter controlled ordering of your results. This is very common in APIs. You want to get back data in a particular order and you want to use a URL parameter to perhaps customize that ordering dynamically based on some of the fields that are available in that response data. So by default, this query parameter is named ordering, but you can actually override that with the ordering param setting. So you can add that to settings.py and you can change that URL parameter from ordering to something else. And if we scroll up here, this can actually be done for the search parameter as well. By default, it's going to be called search as we just saw. But if you set the search param setting in Django, you can change that to whatever you want. So let's now add the ordering filter to our Django REST framework generic view. So what we're going to do here is split the filter backends onto separate lines and then we're going to define a third filter backend here. So again it's in the filters module and this time it's the ordering filter. And just like before when you define the ordering filter you need to define what's called the ordering fields as an attribute of the generic view. So let's define that just now, ordering fields and again that's going to be some kind of sequence here. You can use lists or tuples and we want to order over the name field and let's say we also want the price field. It might be common to order items in an e-commerce site from the lowest to the highest price or vice versa, from the highest to the lowest price. And again, we might want to add the stock field here. That is a numeric parameter. So we can very easily order on that field. But basically, whatever your actual model is tied to this generic view, you can specify any fields, including related fields, as part of the search and ordering fields. So let's go back to our API now and we're going to go to this page and we're going to remove the search parameter and replace that with the ordering URL parameter. And let's say we want to order by price, so we're going to pass that field in here. Now what we get back are the items from the lowest price and you can see the price of $15 here and that is going up until the last item in this response and you can see the price here is the highest price in the data. Now in order to reverse that and go in descending order, all you need to do is add a minus in the URL and that's similar to the way we construct order by queries in the Django ORM. So ordering is set to minus price here. And if we execute that, we get back the items in reverse order. And this will also work with other fields. For example, if we order by the name field, we're going to get back the items in the order of the name. So alphabetical order, essentially. And the digital camera comes first here. And you can see the items are increasing in alphabetical order. And again, we just need to pass that minus before the name of the field to get it in reverse order. And that gives us this watch as the first item. It's going to work exactly the same for the stock items as well. I'm not going to show that. What I want to show just to finish the video is something I missed from the search fields. So let's go back to these search fields here. And what we had before was the text of vision. So I'm going to search for that and it gives us back items where either the description or the name contains the word vision. Now, if you have a particular field where you want to constrain the search to be an exact match, you can actually do that with the search filter as well. So right now, this is a contains filter and it's case insensitive. But what we can do if we go back to our generic view here, when we define the search fields, if we want an exact match on the name, you can set the field with an equal sign before the name of the field. And what this means is that it's only going to return items where the name is an exact match to what you have in the search filter. So let's try this one out before we finish the video. We're going to go back to the API. Now, when we search for this vision here, it was returning these televisions, but it's no longer going to return those because it's not an exact match. So when we execute this query, we get back an empty query set. Now, if we change this to television, it's going to work because we have an exact match on the name. And that's what we've specified with this syntax here in the search fields. Now, for searches where there's a match in the description, that's going to continue to be just a contains match. So let's go back to the API here. And if we just search for the text of amazing, that is still going to return these products. So that exact match is only on the name field. And that's because we've used this notation, this syntax here. So that's all for this video. We've looked at searching and ordering in Django REST framework using these two built-in utilities, the search filter and the ordering filter. What we'll do in the next video is look at how to define a custom filter backend. So let's say we wanted to define our own filter backend to only return items that are in stock. 
That's something we can very easily do and it's going to demonstrate how we can build our own custom filter backends. So that's coming up in the next video and if you want to support the channel, check out this coffee page that we have in the description. Thanks again to everybody who has contributed to this and is helping to support the channel. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this content. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.